Verse 26 says, For this cause, again, God gave them up unto vile affection. So we can even watch this play out, right? They say, no, okay, God's going to give them up to uncleanness, to follow after their own heart, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. That's just your average worldly carnal person who's just, who's just bent to do whatever gratifies their flesh, right? And then it says this, for this cause God they give them up to what? Vile affections. Now here's what they transition from the things that some normal, natural individual would do unto the vile affections. Uncleanness is something that has a sacrifice for in the Old Testament. Um, vile affections does not. And so they've crossed that line whereby they're not going to see God over their unbelief. They're not going to see God past the flesh that is leading them and f past the carnalness of their mind. God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women changed the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense for their error which was meet. And let's not try to be too harsh with God here. Verse 27 makes it clear. Even as they did not want to retain, retain God in their knowledge, God gave them up to it. That's what verse 28 says. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, right? They pushed him away. God gave them over to exactly what they had asked for to do those things which are not convenient. He answered their prayer in the affirmative. We need to be cautious in our own lives not to pray for certain things and expect them to go a certain way and then have God answer your prayer in the affirmative. That's what these people did to the end of their very soul. God gave them over to the reprobate mind. And what did that do? Well, at one point, they were just doing natural, worldly things, full of lust, full of lies, but they passed over as God gave them up unto vile affections. They did what was against nature rather than what was natural. The men here burning in their lust one toward another, the women changing the natural use into that which was against nature, and then God gives them over to the reprobate mind, even as they had asked for it. Now here, verse 29, being filled. Now it doesn't say they do these things. It doesn't say they, they commit such things. It doesn't say anything to that effect. It says being filled with all. And all always means all, right? It's, it's all encompassing. This list is what they are full of. So we know full means there's no room for anything else. We know all means it encompasses what's about to be talked of. And it says unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without natural, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So here the Bible describes what happens once God gives them up, God gives them up, and God gives them over to the reprobate mind. This is the same reprobate mind that we would see in the person that takes the mark of the beast. This is the same reprobate mind that would be seen in the person that blasphemes against the Holy Ghost. Why? Because God removed himself from them and gave them over to that very mind. They are damned from this point on, and they are full of all the traits that we see listed below. Quite often people will say, well, you know, you've been disobedient unto your parents, therefore you were born with a reprobate mind. That's a lie, because the Bible is clear of the progression that happens here, where people reject and they become full of just the general lusts of any man, and they are consumed by it, to eventually God reaching out again, and they become given over to the vile affections. The progression just keeps playing out, to which the point... And the finality of it all is that they're given over to the reprobate mind and they're full of these things. People at this time will say, well, you're preaching that they are worthy of death. And I agree, they are worthy of, of death. But keep reading into Romans chapter 2. Well, of course, we should keep reading into the context. It says right before that, that they are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So they'll say, oh, well, if you have pleasure in anything that the reprobate does, then you're caught up in this. Verse 1 says, Therefore thou art an excusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for in thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? 
And, and it continues on and on and on. And I love continuing on to read that because you know what the Apostle Paul is doing here? He is setting forth for an example the suffering, the vengeance of eternal fire, even as described in the book of Jude, that these that have taken the natural course of the wickedness of men have found themselves to where their soul has rejected God and moved a little bit closer to reprobation, whereby they are filled with lust and lies and the most carnal wicked things that man can do then they have taken that next step and they have received in themselves the air which is meat and they are now full of these things and the apostle paul brings this into into the context because he just said hey here's where you could end up even where you're breathing today you could end up being filled with these things you could end up given up by god given over by god where god won't even look at you he can't even see you for the unbelief wall that's before your face he has turned his back on you just the way you have turned your back on him you rejected him he rejected you and therefore you are in this case now unbeliever let's talk gospel now, unbeliever, look at what your end is if you reject today. Look at what your end would be if you reject tomorrow. Who knows how many chances you would even have left you need to believe today. Because tomorrow could be the day that God gives you up. Tomorrow could be the day that God gives you over. Right now could be the time, the moment that God gives you over to a reprobate mind where you're filled with all these things. And where you might as well have just taken the mark of the beast. You might as well have just received... Uh, the mark that damns you to hell. You might have just blasphemed against the God that's desiring to know and save your soul. You might have just said no for the last time. So here, you're an excusable old man. You're judging this list. You're judging the wicked. Hey, I can grab hold of just one of these things without understanding of the God that loves you and point you to the fact that you're on the pathway to reprobation. You're on the pathway to hell and you can face the very judgment of God where you're standing today and breathing. We are sure that the judgment of God is according to the truth of them which commit such things. Thinkest thou this old man that judges them which do such things and do us the same things? You've lied. You've been a liar, right? Do you think you're going to escape the judgment of God? Do you think you're going to spend another day saying no to him and not be closer to the final judgment, the final breath? Who knows, he might even let you go into your own wickedness and vile perversion before you even breathe the last breath. You need to get this right today. You need to get saved today. And this is exactly what Romans 1 was built for. It was to give the worst case scenario of a filthy pervert, sodomite, homo, and say, you don't want to be like this, and the only way you're going to avoid it, because tomorrow could be your last day where you're given over to what? Unrighteousness. Given over to what? Fornication, wickedness, covetousness, haters of God. All of these things become and consume who you are as a reprobate person. That could be tomorrow. Get it right today. Get saved. And then it goes from Romans 2. To Romans 3, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? And he continues on to Romans chapter 4, being justified freely by his faith. He continues on and he tries to plead with the people, the people in the book of Romans, that they need to believe on the name of the Son of God. They need to call upon him and receive him by faith. Because God commendeth his love towards you and that while you were sinners, Christ died for you. Reprobate, it's too late. He's given you over. There is no chance. There is no hope. So get it right today. And so this, again, is the call. We've received mercy. Go and with great plainness, preach it to the lost. Because tomorrow could be the day that they turned over to a reprobate mind. This is why the Bible says that those that are not gathering with me are scattering abroad. Because the more of these that we have, the closer we are to that beast system. Where it, I mean, just shutting down our PayPal is the least of our concerns. Does anyone remember Genesis 19? They're beating down a certain door to find a couple certain holy angels. They're smitten with blindness, and they persist. Implacable, unmerciful. Send us those holy angels, right? So we need to reach them when they're here. Because when they're here, haters of God, enemies of the cross of Christ, right? Deceivers, lying, being deceived, false prophets. There's just more and more and more and more and more of them. And what if... That person that you avoided speaking to on the subway, that person you avoided speaking to at the workplace, what if this was their last chance to hear the voice of God that was from you, and tomorrow they're here? You're scattering abroad if you don't get involved in the gospel ministry. And this is something I need to encourage myself in each and every day, because I, I come into contact with unsaved people all the time. We need to remember that we're in part of the spiritual battle, and people are maybe 
two breaths away from having no hope of salvation. And we need to be that light shining into their lives. Hey, sometimes we'll preach it, and it'll harden them. And it'll just, they'll become that reprobate just because they rejected the preaching of the gospel. But that's not our business. Our business is, remember how we talked about there was no unbelief here when we were saved. We were looking to the cross of Christ. Our business is to lift him up and we would live the life he wants us to and reach those that are still over here. In order to bring truth to them and see them saved to the end that God's kingdom would come upon this earth because we have done our part. Christ would be glorified.